Gentlemen, the time has come once again to discuss things. Everyone, welcome to another mini so of Geeky Gentlemen. We haven't done one of these in a while, but we're back to them again with, I think, a very appropriate topic to discuss. You guys did a similar in joining me as Sid Part 2. Mm hmm. Uh, nice, enthusiastic introduction to yourself. Um, uh, I'm trying to be quiet because people are sleeping in my house. It's about, it's about 1 a.m. Oh, I gotcha. I'll be quiet. You don't have to be quiet. You're not the the computer is not loud enough to reach down the hall. Thank God. But I, Thank God. Anyway, you guys did a similar thing to this with the Man of Steel trailer, so uh, I think it'd be appropriate for us to do this with another trailer that came out recently, the trailer for the RoboCop remake, the 2015 mm -hmm. remake of RoboCop. I think this would be appropriate because one of our most popular videos is the review we did for the trilogy, so. I think that it'd be cool for us to give our thoughts on the RoboCop trailer. Um, so, Ian, general thoughts when you first saw it. Genuine surprise that it looks as good as it does. Um, you know, as, as someone who's never a fan of RoboCop until I saw the movies just about a year ago now. Yeah. Um, we're coming up on all these one-year anniversaries for Geeky Gentleman stuff. Yeah. Um, as someone that never saw the RoboCop movies, not except for brief clips, I was never really a fan of it. And when I heard there was a remake, I looked up IMDb and like I was like, "Wow, this looks like it'll have quite a cast." And when I said that, you two were like, "No, no, it's gonna suck." <laughs> yeah. And so like I, I really didn't have any expectations for it, and uh, I don't know. It's it, it looks it looks surprisingly good. You were. You were surprised? I was shocked at how good it looked. I was cursing this thing up and down from the beginning. I was like, it's going to be shit. RoboCop needs to be remade, but not in this way. You don't you don't need to make RoboCop look like Batman. Um, and, uh, you know, I just I had no hope for it whatsoever. And this trailer looked really good. And here's what I think sold me about it. One, visually, this looks like a modern update on RoboCop should look. This looks like the modern interpretation of the future. All the tech that was in RoboCop is done in a modern context, well, most of it, and it looks great. We have, um, we have uh, these overflying drones, we have uh, jets, we have Ed 209, we have all this different stuff, and... It looks great. It looks fantastic. The CG it was what stuck out to me first because um, I didn't think there would be that much of it because RoboCop's a guy in a suit. And there is a lot of it, and it looks really good. Uh, this movie visually is what struck me first. Um, but the other thing that really impressed me about it is the difference in focus. Because in the original RoboCop, they don't make that big of a deal out of his family. Yeah, I mean, they're not really in it until the third movie. Um, or the second one, even. Well, like, I'm trying to remember. What was the scene where, like, he made her touch his face? That was the second one. Okay, my bad. Um, yeah, it's like they, they really don't make a big deal out of the family in the first movie. And this one, you know, it looks like he still gets to go home to his wife and kids after the surgery. Um it looks like they're still treating him more like Alex Murphy than as this, you know, robot. And I think that part of the reason for that is, is it's set up differently exactly what is going on with Alex Murphy after his quote-unquote death. Right. Um, because in the original movie, they definitely state that if they do not perform this robot, ro uh, this robotization, to quote the Sonic animated series from 1992... <laughs> Uh, if they don't perform the robotization, that he's going to die. That's definitely the right. case in the first RoboCop movie. In this one, they say that he's going to live, but he's going to have all these burns and medical problems for the rest of his life, and he's going to be in a wheelchair. So I think that's a very different kind of uh, focus for how he's going to survive after the fact and what kind of person he's going to be 
um, once he's in the suit because there's more of the man there than there was originally. Right, which looks interesting to me because, you know, in the original, once we first meet RoboCop, he doesn't think he's Alex Murphy. Mm -hmm. He thinks that he's RoboCop. The first... And this little brief synapses that fire, like the first thing that sticks out to his his partner is him twirling the gun. Yeah. Uh, in this, the first minute he wakes up, he's like, what did you do to me? What, yeah, what suit am I in? Yeah. And, like, it's not a suit, it's you, and he chokes the guy. Um, the visor goes down, it's like, oh, that's fucking RoboCop. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's really interesting that they're, they're doing that twist on it. I think it's a good twist because... It validates it more for me, remaking RoboCop, because that's a problem I always have with remakes is, is there a new place to take this that the original didn't take it that is interesting in the modern context? And that's what it looks like they're doing. That's why yeah. I'm sold on this movie now. They're doing the mm -hmm. origin again, but with a different focus. The really interesting thing to me is that the family knows he's Alex Murphy. You know what yep. I mean? That they allow it to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the things that I'm going to be interested in is that scene because you get a brief um, clip here in the trailer of the guy summarizing what his life will be like. They, they say he survived and he's summarizing what the guy's life is going to be like. And I, I get the distinct impression that he's telling the guy's wife at that point getting her consent to do this. Yes, yes. Um, so that'll be – it'll be a really interesting focus, and there's possibly going to be some commentary on you know medicine and, and uh, things that are going on in hospitals and, and stuff like that uh, right. when a family member dies. It looks like there will be some commentary on that here. Yeah, which is, again, a really cool place to take RoboCop and makes me – Again, more sold on this on remaking the movie because it's like we're going to take the bare bones premise and take it in a different direction. And it looks like RoboCop. That's the other thing that I'm sold on is when I look at, you know, Alex Murphy and I look at the way the movie looks, it looks like RoboCop. I thought it was interesting that the trailers had him more in the silver suit than in the black suit. Right. You know? which, or, right. Which, at least this first trailer did. Right, which is a distinction they do make. Because that was the big thing and why I said this was going to be a piece of shit because RoboCop looked like shit. I don't like that black design. In the movie or in the trailer, they say – because he starts out in what essentially is the classic RoboCop suit. Just a little more sleek. Yeah, yeah it, it looks great. It looks fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Michael Keaton is like, no, nah, we need to make him look more tactical. Make it black. And then he steps out of a, a Humvee, it looks like, and he's in the black suit. And it still has the visor flipped down, and it's got this red effect. It looks fine, um, but I'm glad it... I'm, I'm not a fan of the black guy, though. Oh, no, I think it looks... I, I don't, I'm not a fan of it either, but... Because um, it's just like, it doesn't look like RoboCop. Um, but it looks like, from the trailer, it looks like he's going to be more in the silver, which is cool. I, you really don't know. I, I'm, I'm honestly betting a 50-50 split, if we're lucky. Um... Well, you know what it looks like to me? It looks like he's in the black when he's working for Omnicorp. And mm. he's looking at... And it looks like he's going to get the silver back once he strikes out on his own. It looks like he's almost going to like go out for vengeance. Because they say in the, in the trailer that this RoboCop thinks that he has free will, but he actually doesn't. Um, and he's, and then it turns out that he does because he's going against the programming. Right. Which um, it almost looks like. And I don't know how I didn't spot Gary Oldman the first time watching this, but yeah, he's totally the scientist from the first movie. Oh, he isn't. I see. I still can't spot him. It, 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 he's the guy with the long hair that's talking about the free will thing that we were just mentioning. Oh, oh, okay. Well, he looks like he's going to be fantastic as always. Samuel L. Jackson's in this movie playing uh, what it what looks like the um, Johnson. Johnson, yeah who is one of the best characters in the RoboCop movies because he's in it. I, I love that guy. Yeah, he's fucking awesome. He's honestly my favorite character from all three movies. Yeah, he's one of mine too. Um, Michael Keaton looks like he's playing either either the head of Omnicorp, um, that old white-haired dude that's in the first movie, and he, he keeps getting played by different actors. <laughs> and then um, Either that or he, he might be playing the villain from the first movie who is the guy who actually sanctions the building of RoboCop. 
Um, yeah. Because at first, I think a rival guy on that board builds Ed 209, and it turns out to be a disaster because he kills a guy. That was so... I love that scene. I, no one's concerned that a man is dead. They're just like, this will destroy our person. <laughs> Bad PR, right? Um, <laughs> no, like a man just died in front of them. Like, they, a couple of them had their had the dude's blood on them. I mean, he didn't... And just, no one cared. He didn't just die. He got destroyed. <laughs> um, now, um... And, it looks like Michael Keaton might be playing that role because he is significantly younger than that character. Um, yeah, I think I think he'll probably be... Was it Dick Jones that was the uh, bad guy? I know the first name was Dick. Yeah, um, okay. And uh, it looks like he's going to be playing that role. I really hope Peter Weller is the guy who plays the head of the company. That would just be genius. That'd be cool, or if Peter Weller was just like some random like gang member or something like that. No, not a gang... Maybe another cop. Who, like, That'd be cool. Who, like mentored Alex or like, Murphy. Wait, you remember like the chief of yeah. police? That'd be cool. Oh, that was Peter Weller. Oh my god. Let me just say this about the guy who's playing Alex Murphy. He looks pretty good. He looks like he's gonna be good. Mm. Yeah, no, I have, I'm. I don't recognize the guy, so I can't no, really I speak. Think, I think he's a new. I think he's a new face. Um, I mean, I mean, as what we get of him just as Alex Murphy, he looks like typical, you know, white protagonist. Um. <laughs> Uh, you know, no, I really, I really like that scene where he chokes out the scientist. I think that really worked. Yeah, I, he, he um, that like... that really endeared him to me like instantly because it, it it's it's such a brief moment, but it looks like really good acting right there. And the obvious one to me, the moment that sold me, dead or alive, you're coming with me. That's where I was like, this is a RoboCop movie. Mm -hmm. Um, because he sounded <laughs> disappointed that we're not getting an updated version of the theme though. We have to be. I'm going to be so... See, because it's like... I actually did this. I played the theme at, in a separate window while watching the trailer. Like, you know the moment <laughs> where he actually comes out of the Humvee in the black suit? That's where I started playing it. And it works perfectly. It works with the sequence of the, of the images. And I'm like, why wasn't it in there? This trailer would be double awesome if it was like... Dun, 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 dun. It's got to be in there somewhere. I love the RoboCop bridge. It's so cool. Yep. It's got, like, one of the most iconic themes ever. That and I just, I really hope, I don't know if it'll happen or not, but if this reboot goes well, I really hope we get a, a Terminator crossover on screen, because that would be amazing. Because Terminator property is looking to get some new life back into it. So that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably not, because they're owned by different companies now. Are they now? Yeah, or? RoboCop is Sony, and Terminator now belongs to Warner Brothers. Okay, damn it. It used to be Fox, which is... I can't... I was so shocked when I was like, oh, guess who's making the new Terminator movie? Warner Brothers and the Weinstein Company. I was like, what? Yeah. I actually enjoyed Salvation. I don't know why it got so much hate. Because it's a... The game was shit. What? The game was shit. Oh my god, the game was terrible. But the movie... No, it's not terrible, but it's it's. I mean, it's better than fucking Terminator Three. Um, well, dude, that's like saying an abortion is better than Terminator Three. Um, even though it's wait, no, I'm I'm sorry. That's like saying <laughs> that's like saying Terminator Four. It's late. That's like saying Terminator Four is better than an abortion. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Um, like everything that has ever happened in the world that is terrible is better than Terminator Three. Yeah, I mean. The fall of the Roman Empire is better than Terminator 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a piece of shit, folks. Don't watch it. It's also pointless because it's Terminator 2 again. Um, anyway, so I'm excited now. I wasn't excited before. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, special effects look great. The guy playing RoboCop looks like he's going to do great. I like the Iron Man visor going down. That looks cool. That wasn't in the original. It looks cool. Um, the new Ed 209 looks fucking awesome. Which makes me curious about how much of it we're going to see, like, his face in and how much is going to be the helmet. Um, mm -hmm. Well, like, I, this thing I want to see the most, like, because we don't really get a good impression of it, and it looks like it could be a really fascinating part that we not... Like, we got very, very little stuff with RoboCop's family in the original series. Right. And the little we did was all with his wife. Right. I hope they got a really good child actor, because I would love to see that scene. Oh, yeah. It so looks like, you get, the, you get the clip of it, 
of him sitting there trying to talk to his kid, but you don't get to see them talk. I would love to see that scene. Yeah, because it just looks like the kid's going to be like, why are you metal? Yeah, it looks like it, it would just be such a fascinating thing to see him try to explain that. Yep. Like, just a straight-up dialogue scene would be amazing. Which is also why I'm happy that Alex Murphy is still in there, clearly. Like, again, we keep going back to it. The moment he wakes up, he just he literally starts out going, like, what happened to me? So he knows he's Alex Murphy. It's not like the original where he's just RoboCop now. Um, mm-hmm. That's really cool. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited. I can't wait. Uh, it looks See, that's the thing. The original series, or the original RoboCop film, was about a robot becoming a man. This is about a man keeping his humanity when he has to fight a system of control. Right. Um, which is going to be... I also like... Uh, there's a moment in the trailer where he you just see two guns come out of his arms. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't know, I really want to see... I, I, I don't know if they're going to do it or not. I really want to see over law robot... or RoboCop again. The, the one that has to follow every law. Like in that, that little brief moment in RoboCop 2. I well, love that Well, here's the thing. This movie is based on the Frank Miller script for RoboCop 2. Oh, God, yes. Uh, it's not based on the original script for RoboCop 1. It's RoboCop 2 with Robo- with the origin. That's what it is. I really want to see that scene now because it's going to be... I, I don't care what you say about Frank Miller. The man knows how to do hilarious urban commentary. Yeah, which it looks like they're going to maintain in this. I, I just I just want to see RoboCop following every single bureaucratic law again. Yeah, that was great. Was the most hilarious thing is just when he's like... Hello, citizen. Yep. Um, oh, one thing we didn't mention that we talked about off recording earlier today. How Alex Murphy gets injured. Yeah. Um, in the original, it's an amazing iconic scene where Red Foreman blows him away with multiple shotguns and pistols. And there is nothing left of Alex Murphy. He's just a pile of... Just, when you say it like that, I just have this image of Red Foreman doing that. Like, I have this image of that scene happening, and then Red Foreman walking into the house in that 70s show and just yelling at Eric. That's, that's exactly <laughs> what you make me think of. It's just like, Eric, get to the goddamn kitchen and make me a sandwich. <laughs> yes, sir. It's just like, that's why Red's so intimidating. He just goes out and does shit like that every he just day. murders police officers. <laughs> <laughs> And this gruesome just... See, that's the thing that made the original RoboCop so powerful was he didn't just murder Alex Murphy. He destroyed Alex Murphy. Yeah. Blew off his hand. He sh- oh, my God. And in the new one, it's a car bomb. Well, like, I don't know. It depends because, I mean, if he's still just a regular cop, then it's going to be weird if it's a car bomb that, like, just was randomly put there. It's, it's probably going to have to do, have something to do with him being, like, a really good cop. Here's the thing they're changing, though. He's not just a cop in this. He's a detective. Okay. Because one of the first moments in the trailer is, this is Detective Alex Murphy. So I'm like, oh, now he's not even a cop. He's a detective. So shouldn't it be Robo Detective? That's nowhere near as cool, and you know it. Um, I know. Um... Well, I, like, when you say robo-detective, I just think of, like, that arm in Iron Man that, like, you know, sprayed him with the fire extinguishing stuff. <laughs> I just think of that arm, but it's got a magnifying glass and a Sherlock hat on. <laughs> oh, my God, that'd be amazing. Um, no, I know. Well, and I also know detectives are cops, but still. Um, he's... Make him a fucking cop. I mean... <laughs> also, if he was a cop, your idea would make more sense. Like, what are you going to say? He's a really good detective, so we're going to kill him? And the, yeah, no, I mean, that still works. Yeah, I guess, but I mean, but is, doesn't it make more sense if he's a traditional, like, street cop going around? No, not really. I mean, if he's a detective, he's still solving crimes. I mean, it's not like detectives just sit in offices all day. They do have to go out to crime scenes. But, uh, but I also like him dying in uniform. That's one of the iconic moments of the first one. And now he's just in street clothes, going out to his car, and ba-boom. I, I don't know. I think it can work. Um, we'll it, it'll all depend on the context of why the car bomb is there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm still not... I'm, that's the one thing I'm not sold on is how he gets injured. They better do some fucking explaining. Um, 
Then again, if I could be made... It's not Bill, it just happens randomly. It has, like, nothing to do with the overall plot of the movie. <laughs> He just It's just like Alex Murphy is like dealing with this. It's like a totally different story. It's like this like family drama. And then all of a sudden Alex Murphy just goes out to his car, it blows up. And then it's just all of a sudden a Robocop movie. <laughs> no, Alex Murphy's just like, he's planning to just leave his family. And like he says he's going out to get a beer, but he's planning to just leave his family. <laughs> and the, the car just explodes. And it's like, it turns out it was this terrorist plot but they inadvertently put the bomb in the wrong car because he actually lives next door to the governor of the state. Oh! (laughs) That would be amazing. (laughs) So, like, just just shitty things happen to this guy because he was going to be an ass? He's not even a cop. He's just a a stockbroker. Yeah, right? That's that's the plot of the RoboCop. So, like, when they make him into RoboCop, he's, like, really confused on the job. He's like, how do you fire a gun? Dead or alive? Oh, I don't want to kill people. Uh. <laughs> it's like Robocop kills someone. It's he like, oh no! The visor just goes up and he just starts vomiting <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Wait, does he still have a stomach? I don't know, Bill. Does it really <laughs> matter? Bill, Robocop isn't really going to be a stockbroker. Oh. <laughs> I like our version of Robocop. Robo- Robo stock. <laughs> I like our version of Robocop better where he's a stockbroker who gets killed by accident and is turned into Robocop. It's like they don't even get anyone's consent. consent. They just straight up pick up the body right after it got blown up and they just, oh god, Gemini Springsteen on Robocop. Oh my, no, no, wait, Ian. It's just like they're just driving around like a, like a, like a dog, like a dog hunter. And... <laughs> he just it's like we need to find a dead body and they go into this upper class neighborhood and he's just like chief we found one you just see Alex Murphy just laying there <laughs> and they just go they just sneak up to him and pick him up and just drag him back to this like garbage truck yeah like I will say this much though getting back to, to the serious points to be fair it is kind of a contrivance that Red Foreman is the one that ki- kills Alex Murphy, that Alex Murphy becomes Robocop, and that Red Foreman is directly connected to Dick Jones, who's, you know, the big villain in everything. But wasn't... But wait, I think, though, that it was directly related to him doing it on purpose, though, as far as I... No, he kills Alex Murphy because Alex Murphy stumbled onto the crime scene. Or was following them after a crime. Okay, that's fair. Alex Murphy killing them had nothing to do with the... Or Alex Murphy dying. Had, be, the crime that they commit that Alex Murphy was trying to bust has nothing to do with the overall plot, if I remember it correctly. You're probably right. Um, 80s action movie. Um, so I'll sum it up. But um, yeah, that's totally fair. So, I mean, to be fair to them, this car bombing is likely going to be connected to the overall plot probably. as opposed to just random happenstance like that that's the thing is the red foreman death the the red foreman murder scene there has nothing to do with the overall plot or i'm sorry hold on him stumbling onto the crime that gets him killed has nothing to do with the overall plot yet red foreman is directly connected to the main villain the plot contrivance is fair my point is more of and red foreman actually doing is awesome but um just, I like him doing it on duty. He's doing it as a cop, and he gets decimated in his uniform, doing doing his doing his police duties, which is the thing that the, which is why they choose him to become RoboCop. Because it's not just because it's a corpse; it's because he had this record of being this amazing cop. Well, I mean, you don't get to be a detective right out the bat. I mean, there are some guys that. Uh, spend more time in the academy and immediately graduate and become detectives, but most detectives graduate from street patrol. Um, right, but I'm, because they do a very good job at right, it. Right, no, that's totally um, fair. I'm just saying that... And, and that's what I think is, he might not die in uniform right in the line of duty, but I'm thinking that he's going to be a detective and he's going to be working on something and that he's going to die as a result of you know, looking too closely into things. Right, and maybe it, it, maybe it is directly related to OCP, where he's starting to un- uncover some kind of corporate bullshit, 
and that's why they car bomb him, and then they decide to use him to their advantage. That could be cool. For me, it's just yeah. the visual. and that would make sense because they'd think that they could control him since they – and that would work with the rest of the movie from what we've seen so far about the whole it creates the illusion of free will. Yep, that could be totally cool. I'm just, I'm just talking about the bare bones imagery. I really like that concept, and I hope that that's what they go with. Also, Michael Keaton looks like he's going to be awesome. Fair enough. I, he's barely in it, but okay. Well, yeah, but I mean he has quite a bit of dialogue. He has like two line. No, he, he has look. like two lines, two lines, two lines. Yeah, but that's more you than know. Gary Oldman gets, and you're like, he's gonna be amazing. No, I mean Gary Oldman's always amazing. Name a bad movie Gary Oldman's in. Oh, don't dare me, because I'll find. It. Oh, Lost in Space. Fair enough. Okay, but Gary Oldman's awesome in Lost. He in is space. not awesome in Lost in Space. Yes, he, he is. is not awesome in Lost in Space. There yes, is, he is Ian. There is nothing awesome about Lost in Space. No, for, for how bad a movie it is, Matt Gary Oldman LeBlanc, as the Spider Monster Man was pretty awesome. Matt LeBlanc puts on Iron Man armor. That is, you put on Iron Man armor. That, yes, he does. No, you do. Do I? Oh my god, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Any, mm. we're kind of trailing off topic. This trailer looks awesome. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm reasonably excited for it. I'll go see it. Um, like I, before, I was probably just gonna you know wait it out or something, but I'll go see this. Yeah, it looks um, awesome. In theaters, I'm excited. I really want. See, based on how much shit RoboCop can do in this new version, I want a video game based in this new universe. Like, in, it better not be a cheapo, rip-off movie video game that follows the plot of the movie, but really shittily. It should be an extra mission, you know? Well, I think it should... What they should, what they should do, if they were smart, is do it like Batman Arkham Asylum and advertise it on the DVD of the movie and then release it a year later. Either that, or what would be cool is if it was open world like Spider-Man 2. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, that that would be really good for it actually, yeah, that'd be awesome. because that's that's the cool thing about RoboCop is he does he has that classic superhero thing of just going around on the street and shooting criminals, but in the nuts apparently. Oh um, God, I hope they have a nut shot in the movie. Just <laughs> you know that was from Frank Miller. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> um, Frank Miller is one of the most sociopathic people. On the also, planet. question: Is this movie rated R? No idea. It better fucking be rated R. Uh, hold on a sec. This is well, they don't tell you in previews, do they? Sometimes they do. Volume preview has been approved for appropriate audiences. And, no, nope, they don't tell you in previews. I want to know what's up with the jet little plane flying around the city, though. Well, I am assuming it's just an extension of their... Because they also have robotic drones that are fighting Robocop in, in the trailer, which is awesome. Yeah. Like humanoids, which is cool. Like, the whole reason they, in this new version, looks like the whole reason they build Robocop is for fucking PR. Um, <laughs> so, which is a cool concept. Um, because really, um, they show that they don't need to do the whole man in a machine thing. It's just better for PR to do it that way because they brought a good cop back to life and, um, turned him into a superhero. So, it looks good for them. They don't have to do it. They can just build a bunch of drones and have it go out there and kill people indifferently. Yeah. Ed 209. I, I really want to see Ed 209 kill a guy. Again, and just no one cares. I want him to do it to, like... I really hope he does it to, like, fucking... I, you know what would know be cool if Peter Weller was the guy they did it to? That would give him an... That'd be funny as shit. That'd be amazing. He better... I really hope he has something to do with OCP. Or as... He either has to be a police officer or be on the board of OCP and get shot by Ed 209. Or be someone that Robocop saves. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah, Peter Weller does have to cameo in this. I'm going to be really mad if he does Yeah, I mean, this is his bait. Like, it's, I'm going to be almost as mad as I was that William Shatner wasn't in either of the new Star Trek. To be fair, um, that was his choice. No, that wasn't. Wait, wasn't? I thought I heard a rumor. No, I've I've seen an interview with him about this. No one even asked him to be in 09. Which is terrible because the cameo by Leonard Nimoy in Star Trek in the Darkness pissed me off. Really? 
I, I, I like the cameo in that. I just, like, he, he can't be in the... In Into Darkness or anything beyond that, because it wouldn't make sense, but he should have been in 09. Shatner? Oh, totally. Even if he I wasn't playing Kirk. He, what a, yeah, he can't play Kirk in any of the other ones, but he, sh- he should have been in 09 somehow. You know what? It also pisses me off because now they can't have him just play a different character because that would be like, well, why is Leonard Nimoy still his Spock, but Shatner mm-hmm. can't be his can't be his Kirk. It's like, no. Um, wouldn't it have been cool if he was fucking Captain Pike? I mean, I love Bruce Greenwood, but that would have been cool. Shatner has become a much better actor in his old oh, age, yeah. so he could definitely pull it oh, off. Yeah, totally. um, Absolutely. Anyone that disagrees with that, watch Boston Legal. I anyway. knew you were going to say that. Um, Dude, Boston Legal is one of my favorite I know, shows. I tell, you, you fucking suck at stick. I love that suck show. At, you suck at stick constantly, so I bet it is. How often do I bring up Boston a Legal? A lot. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. Name sometimes, please. Last time we talked to Manos, that was a while ago. You brought it up very recently when I was talking about something on Netflix. Anytime I talk about a TV show or an actor, you're like, oh, they were awesome in Boston Legal. It was, it was such a good show. I love I that bet show. it was. I um, bet it was. That's uh, David R. Kelly, right? Yeah. Before rap. Like, here's the thing about the Wonder Woman pilot, all right? That he Aside did. from the fact that it's a piece of shit. Well, it's bad, but it's bad in a really weird way. Because what made Boston Legal awesome was all this crazy, cool dialogue that was just great for, you know, messages about social change or or issues of morality. Things that were, like, really interesting. These characters would have these awesome-ass monologues and stuff like that. And it was just, it was basically just a vehicle for David E. Kelly to get on a soapbox and say, this is how I feel about this. But he did it in really interesting ways with really great characters. So Wonder Woman, the pilot, should have been good on that side of things. Like, she gives a couple speeches, and there are all these really, you know, should be interesting moments. But those are the parts of the thing that suck. (laughs) Whereas the action scenes, which to my knowledge, David E. Kelly has never done, should have been terrible, but they're awesome. The Wonder Woman suit also looked pretty good. Though, uh, it's hilarious. It looks like it was bought at a costume shop, but it probably would have been better had the show gotten picked Here's up. Here's the thing. Um, I, I, I saw this on Hollywood Babylon. There is a porn spoof that was made of Wonder Woman, and the costume looks amazing. And it was yeah. better than the one in the show, which is hilarious. Yeah. Hell, the one that yeah. Lois puts on in Smallville looks better than the one in the fucking David E. Kelly pilot. I, I, I really didn't care about the costume because, I mean, like, she's barely in it and she keeps changing outfits. Like, there's she wears the long pants costume and the shorts in the same That's thing. That's bizarre. Um, um, but also, whatever. the way, and I have never seen it in full, but the way they set it up is, like, this doesn't look like it should be a universe with Wonder Woman in it. It it really shouldn't be because it's it's a fairly realistic universe and she's got jet planes and stuff. Um, no, but there's some cool stuff about what she does. Like there's there's one scene that I actually did like. She goes into a hospital of a guy that she put there, that hospital room, the guy she put it there, and she needs to know some information, so she takes the lasso of truth. And honestly, she can just put that shit on you and it makes you tell the truth. But she like started choking the guy with it because she was pissed off at him for killing people. I, I just really like that. That's that's really awesome. Um, like, people get mad at, at that pilot for Wonder Woman, you know, killing a guy, and I don't care. I like... I'm I not opposed to Wonder Woman. I don't care because she's a warrior. Um, yeah, she's she's like a Spartan. Yeah, sort of she's not really a, not a traditional superhero. I mean, I just don't think that that's mm-hmm. a character you should put street-level fighting crime. Um... Yeah, I'd agree. Um, but not the, the action scenes. The thing is, the people she's fighting are supposed to be, like, super steroid people. Oh, um, no. So. No, they're supposed to be, like, super soldiers, so. Look out, Captain America. You're, you're, you're going to be given a run for your money. <laughs> Wonder Woman would kick Captain America's ass. Probably. Well, that's like saying the Superman would kick Captain America's ass, so. Fair enough. Which he would. Well, of course. I mean, that's like, that's like saying a fucking spider is gonna beat an ant in a fight. 
You don't know that. Well, ants don't go to fights alone, Bill. All right, one ant versus one spider. Who's going to win? The spider. There you go, Ian. But Captain America goes into fights alone. Intentionally. I'm gonna... Anyway, anyway, let's... let's, let's <laughs> this is... This is going Both really weird. Both episodes we've recorded tonight have ended me saying I'm going to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> My, the point I'm making is an ant wouldn't go into a fight alone, whereas Captain America okay. would, so you need a better I analogy. Heard this, I heard this argument made once. Who wins in a fight, an alien or a predator? <sighs> one alien, one predator, locked in a room, who walks out of their life? I'm going to say the predator, depending on the weaponry he, he has. He has all his usual gadgets. Yeah, Predator easily. Yeah, there you go. Argument made. All right, so that's thoughts okay. on the RoboCop trailer. <laughs> it was pretty fucking cool. I'm yeah, sure. thanks everybody. Talk to you later. Until next time, though. I'm the philosopher. I'm the fanatic. And I'm the madman, even though I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and we are your geeky gentlemen, and we will be discussing things.